We shall start the last chapter of this course this week and we'll devote most of the week to this last chapter. The last chapter is an application of topology, topological methods rather, to dynamical systems. Have you heard of dynamical systems? Hmm? You haven't? Uh, you have been doing mathematics for a long time. Surely you have heard of <laughs> dynamical systems. Dynamical systems are, in some sense, a modern growth of differential equations. You know, nowadays, except elementary courses and except the beginning students, nobody tries to solve a differential equation. Because all the solvable differential equations have been solved. We know all the tricks. Rather, the challenge when given a differential equation, when you model something in terms of a differential equation, is to extract solutions, or rather extract information about the solution without solving the differential equation. Yeah. How, what can you say about the behavior of the solution without writing down the answer? Yeah. That's a much more powerful approach, and that's what we do nowadays with differential equations. And that point of view is called differential equation, uh, not differential equations. You see, I'm not awake yet. It's too early. Though. <laughs> that point of view is dynamical systems. Okay. So as such, it is really a vast and very powerful field. In fact, it's not quite a field. It's basically all of science. But that's what dynamical systems are. Because you know, everything that we study in nature, in society, what have you, evolve in time. And we want to keep track of how the system evolves in terms of time. So, with that preliminary, I'm going to start the discussion. Most of the discussion will be concerned with equilibria in dynamical systems, but the topological ideas can be applied to many other features of dynamical systems. Now, there is something tricky, difficult, in this application at the outset, in the beginning. And that is how we visualize a vector field. The elementary method is given a vector field, for example, on the plane, for example, in space, but on more general surfaces and manifolds, to draw lots and lots of arrows. I hope that you are familiar with vector fields because you learned multivariable calculus in your education. Usually you draw lots and lots of arrows, but there is an alternative method which turns out to be important for applications of topology, and it is the method of visualizing a vector field by its graph. Now, what do we mean by this? Here is an example. Let us visualize the vector field that corresponds to the differential equation, which is like this. Please note that although, yes, in some elementary textbooks, elementary courses, you might have been writing dy dx all the time, Modern mathematicians, today's mathematicians around the world, all, almost always write dx dt. So the independent variable is t. We think of it as time. Okay? And the dependent variable is x. So please do not be confused. x is not the independent variable. x is the dependent variable. So if you have been writing dy dx all your lives, you should change your view viewpoint or notation. So that's the vector field. You see. The right-hand side gives you this rate of change of the left-hand side. There are two possibilities. You have a question? Yes? Somebody. I heard a voice. Maybe I was... What do you mean x equals 0? No. You mean, is this equal to zero? Yeah. No. No. Have you ever seen a differential equation in your life? 
<laughs> no, but many, some people may not have. I don't, um, I'm just assuming that people have, but maybe my assumption is wrong. Have you seen a differential equation in your life? Can you write down a differential equation, one differential equation, any differential equation, please? Can you, come on, come, come on, I don't have, we don't have time to waste, so maybe you can dictate. Any differential equation. Let's go. Okay, then you have never seen a differential equation in your life. If I ask you to write down any example, and you cannot, it can be a simple example, it can be an, a trivial example, and you cannot, that means that you have never seen a differential equation in your life. In which case, we should discuss the matter later. Because you have never seen a differential equation in my life, I should try to teach you some differential equation later on. But, so you cannot write down any differential equation at all. You, you say your reaction is, I don't know. Is that, is that what it is? Is that the end of the discussion? I don't think so. I don't think so. You're wasting your opportunity. I, I don't think you should waste your opportunity. But unless you re respond a bit more quickly, yeah, you know, you know, Al Hazara was, it's not just you, it's about most other people. You know, I have, we have to spend usually 10 minutes persuading the student to say what they know. 10 minutes, whereas they could have said it in 10 seconds. And that means that we can do so, much, so little during the three weeks. If you just say what you know, we can do so much more. So let's not waste time, because really, I love your company, but I'm not here for long. You know, I go away, and that's goodbye. So do you know any differential equation? Yes. Have you seen any differential equation? Yes. Can you write down any differential equation? Just give me one differential equation. Any differential equation. Please. Okay. So, that's a differential equation. You said that you didn't know. <laughs> two, minutes, two minutes ago. Right? Do you realize what's happening? Yes, you are shy. Yes, it's funny. Oh, yes, now you, you say that you know. But, you know, those two minutes are gone. Right? In fact, it's more than three minutes now. Do you, do you know what's happening? You, what's happening is that if you're going to live, you know, a life, you can, instead of doing mathematics and instead of achieving so much, because instead of doing things in 10 seconds, you insist on doing things in 10 minutes, that's a factor of 60. Well, if you are going to be, be active for 60 years in mathematics, you can achieve only what is worth for one year. So really, we should change the attitude and get going. Yeah? It's not just, just you, it's about everyone. At Ames, I often find that people are very intelligent, very hardworking, and very nice, but really, the teachers must sort of ask them and ask them and ask them for 10 minutes before they say what they know. Please get going quickly. Yes? You understand what I'm saying? I hope so. So this is a differential equation, Al-Zahra. Al al so do you think that you always put it equal to zero? No. Why not? Well, because that's what you want to do, solve, and that's your relationship. You are not suddenly saying, ah, this is a polynomial, and whenever I see a polynomial, I think it's an algebraic equation, so I'm going to write it down to zero. Right? So we don't a priori put it equal to zero. That's the differential equation so far. But, interestingly, it is interesting to look at the case when this is equal to zero. Now, I cannot find the eraser. What's going on? Why did it end up there? It's very strange. Next time I'm going to find it there, next time in the other room, and so on. <laughs> Mysteries. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's not waste any more time. We'll see equals zero in a moment. You are thinking equals zero because of equilibrium, probably. But that's slightly later. So, let's visualize this differential equation, or rather the dynamical system, or rather the vector field. Okay. 
here is how you did. visualize it. Three points, zero and plus minus one. And here, if I'm at this point, hmm, let's draw an arrow at this point. Let's draw the velocity. What's the velocity somewhere here? Well, if I'm at the point, for example, two, the velocity is x equals two, so two times two squared minus one, whatever that is, it's six, so it's pointing in this direction. What I'm going to write, draw is something like this, so if I go further out, it's much longer, but anyway, in this part of the picture, I'm moving right. Clear? In this part of the picture, it's easy to check, I'm moving left, and this part of the picture, I'm moving right, and this part of the picture, I'm again moving left. Okay. What if I am at one of those points, 0, 1, and plus, minus 1? Those points. What is the velocity vector at those points? And you can, it's 0. Do hmm? you see that? At 0, minus plus 1, this right hand side becomes 0. So these are what is called equilibria. The, that is the velocity field. Let's write not velocity field, so vector field is zero. Um, velocity at these points <coughs> is zero, and that means that if you put the point. Here, the point will not move. Okay, so that's what it means. Okay, so that's what an equilibrium, equilibrium is, and that's why our friend was asking about putting that equal to zero. But in, initially, what we are studying is the behavior, the behavior of this. Now, there is an alternative way of thinking about this. So that was the x-axis. The alternative way is quite nice too. Let's draw the graph of v of x in terms of x. When I say a graph, people always want to intersect the two axes. But in this case, for a reason that you see, it's much better to write the vertical axis on the side, not in the middle. So the one possible picture is just directly like this. But the other possible picture is the following. I draw a graph of this function. So this is vx um, equals x of x squared minus 1. OK, so that's the graph. That's easy to draw, right? And then you ask yourself, what is happening? First of all, there are three points where the graph intersects the x-axis. What does that mean? It means that at those three points, naturally, v is 0. But what does v0 mean? It means that the velocity is 0. That means that you don't move at those points. So those are the equilibria. Then you ask yourself again, for example, in this region between minus 0 and 0, and uh, minus 1 and 0, you see I'm really not awake, minus 1 and 0, the graph is positive. What does it mean? It means that in this part of the picture, v is positive. That means that the velocity is pushing you in the positive direction. Is that clear? So here, I'm going in this direction because the graph is positive. Here, I'm going in this direction because the graph is negative. What does negative value of the graph mean? That means that the vx, the velocity, or the vector field is negative sign, which means that the velocity, dx dt, is negative, which means that I'm going this way. So in the part of the picture where the graph is hanging down, I go left, and standing up, I go right. 
How about here? Which, way, which direction do I go? Right, and you can see that further I go, the bigger the value of v, so I go faster and faster. And here, of course, I go left, and I go faster and faster in the negative direction. Okay? So this and this, those two pictures contain exactly the same amount of information. But it turns out that this picture will be useful for us for topological applications. So we shall be working with this picture, but please um, always um, be able to translate between this picture, this picture. Okay? Good. Now, that was in dimension one. In dimension greater than one, in dimension greater than one, graphing a vector field can be a little tricky. So we have to do something strange. First, let's um, look at an example. In this case, dimension 2, I'm going to discuss a vector field which looks like this. Okay. I hope you understand what this means. I also should point out that in textbooks and so on, usually this V is written as the Gothic V, um, sort of thick letter V, and so on. But on the blackboard, it's difficult to do, so I'm going to write it like this. Some people put an arrow over it, but because we'll be writing lots and lots of vector fields, that becomes tiresome, so I'm going to omit the arrow. You understand from the context what this means. Let's draw the picture of this vector field in the usual way. That is, in the first one. Okay? How does this work? Well, for example, at this point, which way does the vector point? Hmm? Rosemary, you can see. That's x, that's y. At this point, which way does the vector, point, vector field point? Huh? Well, positive means what? In that direction? That's positive. Huh? No. What do you think x is and what do you think y is? Approximately. I didn't give you any numerical values. Huh? x is 0? I keep saying this one. Just give some value of x. Huh? Yeah, for example, somebody says x equals 1. Is there anything fundamentally wrong with this? No, x1, or x equals 1. That's okay. Well, what's y? Okay, so, why do, so what's the vector? What's the vector? What, what's the vector? The vector is at this, at this point is this one. So what's the vector? Yeah, so what's the vector? Please call out the uh, components. And what's the second component? You see, I have to keep talking for 10 minutes before you say what you know already. Yes? <laughs> Zero and one. OK. And which way does it point? This way. The vector 0, 1. Which way? You know this. This way. Vector 0, 1. Try it once again. Vector 0, 1. OK, come to the blackboard. Come to the blackboard. Come to the blackboard. Come to, come, come to the blackboard, please. Come to the blackboard, please. Starting at this point, please draw the vector 0, 1. OK. Why do you look at me? <laughs> yes. OK, good. So, Rosemary, you knew this. You kept saying this way and that way. <laughs> it's interesting that we had to Ask Rosemary to come to the blackboard and draw it until she said what she knew. It's quite interesting. And the reason is, while you ask 
being asked a question and you're responding to a question, you are not active. You're sitting there and saying, okay, one, two, A, B, C, and so on, maybe, maybe. You are not really active. But if you have to stand in front of the entire class and you have to do it, you now become serious. Okay, now I have to solve this problem <laughs> and I know what the answer is, so I'm going to write it down. Well, really, we should become serious from the beginning. And then you can move on so much faster, okay? So, and make progress and make use of life. So, zero one is, of course, pointing up. Let's not be ridiculous. So, here, the vector field looks like this, but rather, let me draw it with it then, right? How about here, vector field? Which way does it point? Silence. Which, which way does the vector field point? Negative. Don't say negative. Negative means what? Negative means this way? Huh? No. No, come on. Okay, pointing at Sajja. So, at this point, please imagine what X and Y are. What are they? What's X? What's Y? Zero and one. Okay, so what's the vector, what does the vector look like? Yeah. yeah zero. X is zero, Y is one. That's what you said? I agree with you. So what's the vector at this point? Can you speak a bit more loudly because I cannot hear? Hmm? Pointing up along the y-axis, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? If, if x is 0 and y is 1, if x is 0 and y is 1, that is the name of this point. At this point, x is 0, y is 1, what is the vector? 0, 1. If x is 0 and y is 1. Minus 1 and minus 1. Sorry, yes. I'm sorry too. You know, again, it took us a whole minute to do this. Let's keep, get going, shall we? Okay. So, it's, what are they? Minus 1 and 0. Minus 1 and 0. So, which way does the vector point? Down. Down. Minus 1 and 0. Try again. Okay, do you want to come up, up and then draw? Because probably you can. So, which way does the vector point? Good. She's drawing on her own not notebook. And then she'll be able to do it. Which way does it point? Do you remember what you just said? Components, minus one and zero. You, you do it like this. Which way does it point, please? Towards the right. Is that what, what you said? Okay, come, come, come. Did you say the vector minus one, zero? That's what you said, right? Please draw that vector. Does it go right? Okay, so if I asked you plus one and zero, what would you do? Yes, I'm sorry too, yes. So which one is the original vector? <laughs> Sergio, one last time. Which one is the original vector? Left. It goes left. Okay. Yeah, you know this already. Right? Okay. Really, we shouldn't have a class at 8.30 in the morning. But. Okay. Okay. It points left. Can you guess what the rest of the picture looks like? Trevor can, for example, here. Which way does the vector field point? Down. Down. Okay. You're not Trevor, but you're brilliant. And here, it points this way. What, which way does the vector field point at this position, you think? Anybody? Going? Yeah, that's correct. So it, it, it's going this way. And that's easy to figure out because, for example, if the coordinates are 1 and 1, something like that, look, it's minus 1 and 1. I hope you can figure out which way the vector field points, vector points at for minus 1 and 1, yeah, without taking 5 minutes, minus 1. X code components are negative, 1, Y components are positive, so it's going to put one like this. So, this is what it looks like. Can you say what this vector field does? 
rotates. It rotates. That's what it does. OK? So in general, if you want to draw a trajectory of this uh, solution curve to this vector field, they are all circular trajectories like this. And the effect of this differential equation is to take any initial condition, x0 and y0, and just start rotating it like this. OK? So that's what it does. That's picture number one. Picture number two is much more abstract. And it's going to be a little confusing. Picture number two tries to do what we did with the graph. But in order to draw this graph, we have to have two dimensions for the position and two dimensions for the velocity vector. So we need four dimensional space, which we don't have. So we are going to draw the graph in a somewhat abstract fashion. This is the plane of v of x, y, and this is the plane of x, y. OK? I hope you can be with me. And here, we are going to draw this kind of graph. Those circles. Yeah. Can you see what I'm drawing? Now, in the middle, I'm going to plant lots and lots of different uh, things. At this point, which corresponds to this point, what does the value of the vector look like? Well, it's vertical up. Right? You agree? Now, at this point, at the origin, what is the value of the vector field? At the origin, Come on. it's zero. In other words, it's an equilibrium, to use the word that we have just learned. Okay? At zero, you don't move. And at this point, the next point, let's say, over here, I'm going to put lots and lots of panels. What's the vector field? Well, it's at this point, so it's pointing. Right. Okay? And at this point, that corresponds to that point. It's pointing left, and so on and so on. So maybe at this point in the back, we cannot really see it, but it's pointing down. And so on and so on. Now, you realize that this is a very abstract picture, and you shouldn't trust it too much. Let's, let's draw it a little differently, so, so that I can see the arrow in behind. It's kind of pointing, it's pointing down. OK. We have to do this if we are to draw the graph of this vector field, because the graph would require 2 plus 2 4 dimensional space. So this is the best we can do. But I hope you understand the idea of this graph, which is that at each point, you figure out which way the vector field is pointing. In other words, what the value of that vector field is. The value is a vector. And so to each po point, I associate a vector. So if we have the space, or the manifold, and the set of vectors in the vertical direction, vector, vector space, then you can imagine some sort of graph, yeah, like this. At each point, I have a certain value, and that's the value, vector value, of that vector field.